ready? All right, good evening everyone, and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. Today's date is Tuesday, February 13th, 2018. And I wanna remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded and to please turn off your cell phones. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson, Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson, Mrs. Granado? Uh, present. And Weathersfield High School student representative, Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Thank you, Ellen. And tonight, Justin, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Justin. Okay, Mr. Emmett, I know we have a very full agenda tonight, so there is no student or staff recognition. Uh, no, Mrs. Granado, this evening we don't have any staff student recognition. Uh, however, on the 27th of February, we'll have Emerson Williams along with a uh, CAS award presentation. March 13th, we'll have Highcrest uh, doing PBAIS and Silas Dean Middle School Drama Club. Uh, March 27th, PBAIS for Web students and staff. We'll also be integrating uh, fall and winter sports for the athletic department and the King Arthur baking program through Silas Dean Middle School. So we've got a lot on the agenda for future meetings. Great. All right, so next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting that was held on January 23rd, 2018. Are there any corrections? Uh, Madam, I, I just have a question. Um, indicates in the... Um, uh, in the minutes, just um, bear with me, that um, under communications um, in regard to the um, facilities and maintenance committee that the committee had met with uh, Colliers. And um, it wasn't I just the was committee, wondering yeah. if I missed something. No? no, it wasn't the committee. Oh, it was okay. just a few of us oh. that um, met with Kyle. It was John, myself, and Michael. I believe that was okay. it. Okay. I, I think that the minutes ought to be corrected for that. Okay. Thank you. John Cassio. Okay, anyone else with corrections? Thank you, Polly, on yeah. that one. Okay, thank you. Okay, may I have a motion to approve these meetings, these minutes? So moved. A second. second. Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. So if there's anyone wishing to make a public comment, please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. Okay, thanks. All right, Mr. Emmett, you have communications to I share? do, I certainly do, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first wanna talk with you about the accountability indices. Um, the state accountability indices were released to the state, uh, by the state on Friday. They're available to the public on the state website. Uh, once again, I am very proud to report that Hammer School has again been named a school of distinction uh, for highest growth among all students. Uh, the high school remains uh, on focus status for English language arts, category four. Um, at, first, at first look, it appears that the participation rate for high need students in the area of the science assessment is the reasoning behind the school status. The school's ELA performance index for all students actually rose by almost 4%. So we've, we will be providing further information at the next board meeting as we break down the results and talk about what the data demonstrates across the district. Uh, tonight before you uh, is the first read of the Shipman and Goodwin model policies. Um, these series encompass all of the legally mandated policies. This course of action is necessary as we are no longer members of CABE and as such we no longer have access to the CABE searchable online policy manual. Upon adoption of these policies, the Policy and Planning Committee will focus its attention on the non-mandated policies to determine their necessity. Um, we'll be looking at the 9000 series, our bylaws, 
which uh, we have not been uh, reviewing or have not reviewed um, in the last several years. Upon adoption of the S&G model policies, we'll be posting the manual online and it will have uh, keyword searchability. Oh, good. So that's going to be a, a good piece for, uh, for parents and uh, folks looking for specific policies. I uh, wanted to provide a flu update. I know I've been providing this update uh, for board members over the past few weeks. Um, obviously this year's flu season has been uh, challenging. Um, over the past three weeks, I've maintained contact with uh, Chloe Brabowski. She is our nurse supervisor. Um, we are monitoring attendance and uh, Chloe reports at this time, there is no atypical flu activity compared to previous years at this point. Uh, she reports as recently as Friday that the Central Connecticut Health District is not currently asking for flu data collection from its member districts. Uh, we have an ample supply of wipes and hand sanitizer at this time for each of our buildings. And custodial staff members are continuing to focus on wipe downs of common areas such as water fountains and door handles. If parents have any questions regarding the flu, please do not hesitate to contact your school nurse for assistance. Mm -hmm. Uh, very happy to report this evening that the gym floors are complete. Uh, I uh, provided you in your Friday update uh, with pictures of each uh, floor. They look absolutely fabulous and we're certainly hopeful that they last for a long, long time. So again, thanks to Fred Bushy for really holding the feet to the fire with regard to our vendors. Uh, again, just to remind everyone that cost uh, was not absorbed by the Board of Education, it was absorbed by the vendor. So. I uh, want to give you an update with regard to facilities and maintenance. I just received the cost summary for the four phases for planning work regarding the development of a redistricting and renovation plan. Uh, Ms. Murphy is currently polling members of facilities and maintenance uh, subcommittee to set a meeting to review this information. So we'll have more information coming to you shortly. Uh, the Stillman roof. I expect that uh, roofers will be back at Stillman tomorrow. I received uh, word from Sally Katz on that today. Um, looking to get this project finished up this week uh, with the weather finally breaking. Um, obviously this project is extended beyond the timeline due to weather conditions. Just a reminder to everybody um, in the public, the draft strategic plan is still up online on the website. Um, we'll leave it up for the rest of this week. Um, this is an opportunity for everybody in the community to weigh in on our strategic plan. Does it work? Does it not work? What suggestions might you have? I want to thank, uh, give a big shout out to those ha that have already responded thus far. We're greatly appreciative of the, uh, the communication. I uh, want to give you an update with regard to the high school. Um, as you know, on Saturday I contacted you and let you know that the pool was closed. Um, we had a town event and uh, it needed to be closed for health reasons. Uh, I can tell you that the pool is now open and fully functional. On Sunday, we had uh, an electrical panel fail at the high school. Uh, this did not have an impact on electricity in the building. However, its failure has resulted in the exterior lighting on the east and south sides of the building being out. Uh, Fred is working on getting a replacement panel now and uh, we will need to repair this as this is a safety issue. I was over at the high school last night and uh, when I left, it was definitely dark in those parking lots. So this is something that we need to address. Uh, for vacation, just to let everybody know, I don't know if everybody's looking at the calendar or not, but there's a vacation coming up. So um, for our students, Justin, I know you are, uh, vacation begins this Friday the 16th and runs through Tuesday, February 20th. Staff members will be in on Friday for professional development. Uh, board members, I'll get you a copy of the professional development schedule prior to Friday so you can see everything that's going on. So staff members will be very busy. And with that, that is communications. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Michael? No? Okay, so we'll move on. So we have a lot of um, motions tonight. So under action items tonight, motion 6A, and I'll be reading that one. Um, move that the Wethersfield Board of Education support the creation of a Wethersfield Education Foundation for the purpose of enhancing and enriching our schools. Um, can I have a second for that motion? Second. Okay. And some discussion. We have Sue Fennelly who will come up and we have a slideshow to present, to present and we have other members, a member of the, the board of directors. Come on up, Sue. And Laura, thank you.
Well, good evening. I'm very happy to be here to um, announce the formation of the Weathersfield Education Foundation. Um, I just have to tell you that when we started looking into the possibility of forming this organization, uh, I was surprised that Weathersfield was one of very few towns in the Hartford area that didn't have a functioning foundation already. So uh, I'm pleased to tell you that we, we have one in place now and um, we have a PowerPoint presentation that will help us explain to you the mission of the foundation and how everybody in the community can get involved. Um, I'd like to point out that we have a great logo that was um, designed by Joanne Campbell, who was a teacher at Wethersfield High School. I'd also like to introduce Laura Bloomquist, who is a member of the uh, board of the foundation. The Wethersfield uh, Education Foundation is an independent 501c3 organization that exists to support and enrich the goals, mission, vision, and strategic plan of the Wethersfield Public Schools. The WEF exists to further the following goals. To support transformative learning experiences, to create opportunities for independent student learning and entrepreneurial endeavors, to empower teachers to maximize potential and promote excellence, to connect our community through collaboration, and to foster civic responsibility and engagement. We have been considering as a board some of the things that we might possibly do uh, in each of those areas. And right now, um, we're exploring different possibilities. We're going to uh, survey the staff uh, and see if we can have them uh, give us a list of their wishes. Uh, remember that there are needs and wants. And the needs should be covered by what's going to go on tonight uh, in your budget. The wants are things that we hope we can help with. And with the way uh, the budget process is going here in the state nationally, um, it's, it's really a very important time for us to put something like this together so we can help our students achieve the best uh, education possible. So we just have some examples, um, examples of um, Examples of uh, transformative learning. Um, there's a possibility of uh, supporting virtual classrooms, uh, providing specialized uh, equipment for uh, labs, possible to endow a chair, uh, and provide various uh, special events and programs that relate to the arts, theater, or athletics. Opportunities for independent learning. Um, there's a possibility that we could sponsor some student research projects, and we'd like to uh, very definitely encourage entrepreneurial endeavors. Um, we hope that through our efforts, we can empower teachers to maximize their potential in the classroom and to promote excellence uh, among the students in their classes. Uh, we'd like to, to help the connect uh, through collaboration by um, having <clears throat> experts come in to share their expertise, uh, such as having artists or authors or people who are uh, experts in various professional um, careers come in and share that expertise with the students. So not only are we interested in the money aspect of providing um, enrichment for our schools, we're also looking at uh, human um, resources that can come in and uh, share their expertise with the students as well. And then foster civic engagement uh, through government speakers, through service initiatives, and through action projects which will allow students to experience the importance of civic involvement. At this point, um, the sky's the limit 
we, we don't, we are not focused on any one particular thing. Uh, our mission is to find ways to enhance and support education. And so, as I said, we're going to be surveying the staff, but we certainly would also welcome ideas from the community if they have any thoughts in terms of how we could um, provide assistance for any of the uh, goals that have been mentioned. <coughs> how can you help? Well, you can help by volunteering your time. And I think my most important message tonight is that we would love everybody in town to become a member of our foundation. Uh, so you can volunteer your time and your expertise. Um, you can share your connections if you have business connections or uh, connections with people in various higher education institutions. We would welcome all of that. Laura is um, agreed to be the chairman of, for lack of a better word, our alumni uh, committee. And her job is going to be to search out and put together a database of um, people who have graduated from our schools who are experts and have been successful in various careers. So I'm excited about that, Laura. So I look forward to seeing what kind of a list you can come up with. But we'll be seeking not only um, advice and uh, volunteers, but we will certainly also seek some contributions from alumni, from individuals, from corporate and business contributors, through grants, through bequeaths, and through institutional supports and uh, cooperating with places of higher learning. <clears throat> um, we have, uh, we do have a website, and I'll give you that in a minute. Uh, so on the website, whoops, excuse me. On the website, there's information about how to uh, contribute to our foundation. Jeff Kotkin is our treasurer and Matt is our assistant treasurer. So they'll be handling all the money, which is very good as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, but any questions that you might have with respect to the operation of the foundation or how to become a member, uh, you can direct those to me and um, my email is there and it will be on the website as well. At the moment, we have a very enthusiastic board of directors, uh, and we have filed all the paperwork with the Secretary of State, so we're official. And uh, we have filed the paperwork to establish ourselves as a 501c3 uh, foundation. Membership is open to anyone interested in promoting the mission of the foundation. And again, if you have any questions uh, about becoming a member, we have the website, and certainly please feel free to contact me with any, uh, any questions about that. This is our board of directors, and um, we're very excited to uh, begin our work with this foundation. And uh, I thank uh, each and every one of those individuals for stepping up to the plate and volunteering their time. Also, you'll notice that we have um, our website set up, and I'd like to thank our Vice President, uh, Jen Murphy, uh, who produced the PowerPoint, and she also put together our website. So her technical uh, expertise has been very much appreciated. <coughs> so once again, we now have a Weathersfield Education Foundation we are established, we have a website, and uh, the next thing that I hope will happen is that everybody in the community will sign up to become members. And we'll be happy to take any questions that you might have. Anyone with any questions for Sue or Laura? No, you explained everything, so we're all set. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Any other discussion on this? We go to a vote. All in favor of um, supporting this creation of a foundation? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? So that motion passes. 
So Kevin, would you read motion 6B for us? Uh, move that the Wethersfield Board of Education approve uh, WHS English Department course edition of Myths and Legends. Second. Okay. Second. Is there any discussion? Um, those who are on the student program and um, uh, student program services, it, it, that was fascinating. The presentation was excellent. John, you have a comment? Yeah, it was fascinating. It's my maiden voyage on this committee. Um, <laughs> one of the things I didn't realize, which this is actually a wonderful benefit for our kids, is in this program, this is UConn credited, they get full UConn credit for this for like 175 bucks. It's a steal because you would pay that per credit to UConn and it's a three credit class. It's, it's just a whole mm -hmm. lot. I couldn't be happier that we're doing this. Yep. So yeah. in the course catalog, is it indicated that way? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, because right here it doesn't say that. I would not know that. I understand that it's yeah. a one credit um, here and would be one credit at any other college other than UConn if you um, <coughs> pay 175, then it becomes three credits at UConn. Is that correct? Tom Moore is going to explain it. Because when I heard this math, I was very intrigued. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you. We have two early college experience classes associated with the University of Connecticut that are offered by our English department. One is in uh, literature and one is in writing, right? So those are two very specific classes, not the classes that we're asking for approval this evening. The ones that we're asking for approval this evening are part of uh, an elective program and part of a survey that was given to students right. uh, and they kind of identified what their favorites were. So the ones this evening are not the ECE classes. However, the two ECE classes are still being offered. And to just clarify, because Mr. Healy is correct, the credit at Wethersfield High School would be one credit, right, towards their graduation requirements. And then they have the utility of having in their pocket three University of Connecticut credits that are transferable to most universities and there's actually a website that you can look at to identify which of the many and I think it's over 90 percent of the colleges throughout the United States it will be applicable to. Okay. Thank okay. Any other Thanks questions? Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. And, and, and that cost is um, I think like 389 or 380 um, once you sign up for the UConn credit. credit. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, but and, and it's so not the this cost one. Of we find it. Field is three eighty nine. You 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 personally have no. You it. register on the UConn website. Okay. And um, you register for that class via the UConn website. And you pay. I think it's like three hundred and eighty dollars. But you get one credit in the weather. No, you, it's yeah, one credit. Three, three if you right. transfer three credits, to UConn. Three okay. credits at UConn, which is well worth it. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. no question. Mm -hmm. I just had never heard the three no, three hundred dollar number. I, but just to clarify, the Myths and Legends is not a right. UConn not course. A UConn. Okay. Right. Okay. Any other comments on it? All right. Um, is there, we, did we have a second for that motion? Y yes, we did. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. So motion 6C. Chris, would you read it for us? I'll try if I can get my mm -hmm. computer here. Okay. I move that uh, we approve the Weathersfield High School English Department course edition film as literature referenced 3A. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this? If I could, uh, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, real briefly, I was uh, very impressed with the presentation made by, I believe, uh, uh, Stephanie McKenna and Mrs. Coco. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Um, and I, uh, as many of you know, this is the first time I've actually used my degree in, in the course of anything in my life, and it's on this issue because I was a film major, believe it or not. And I think it's a great um, idea. I know they're going to be working on the curriculum uh, to get a full rounding experience, and um, I'm delighted that we can offer this to the kids. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? I have to second okay. that. I think that we are coming to using things that the kids are really interested in. And the myths and legends, just to end this um, saying this, the coursework is not only 
myths and legends. They're looking at heroes and other genres and comparing to the myths and legends. So I think it's wonderful that this kind of thing is, is up to date in their lives and right. films and everything. So it's mm -hmm. very good. I'm glad you guys in the student services looked at it carefully. Okay, any other discussion? Let's have a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6C passes. So Elaine, would you read motion 6D? Okay, um, move that the Wethersfield High School English Department um, approve the uh, deletion of the drama class reference reading. Okay, any discussion there? Second. 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 Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? So motion 6D passes. Motion 6E. Ginger, would you read that for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve WHS English Department course deletion of Writer's Workshop Reference 3C. Okay. Second? Anybody second, second. that? Okay. Any discussion? Diane? I, when I first saw the agenda, I had um, some concerns about this because I, I think that um, writing the weakness that we have in our kids, although I've been impressed over the past couple of years how the middle school has kind of wrapped their arms around that and really improved it. Um, but as I read through all the rest of the course descriptions, I was glad to yeah. see that writing was um, an important mm -hmm. component in each of those. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to agree with you. The, the goal is to integrate writing into all these yeah, classes. Yeah, I was because I mean, there's a group of kids that are coming through now, the high school that didn't have the benefit of that writing concentration in the elementary and well, no, at, at the middle school particularly. Good. So, um, I'm concerned about that, but I'm glad to see that writing is incorporated in some of these other new classes. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll take a vote too. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstention? Motion 6E passes. Motion 6F, John Morris. Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve WHS Science Department course edition of Environmental Science A and Environmental Science B. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. All right, any discussion? I would like to know where the information came to add this as a course. I mean, were the kids talking about this, and Justin, as, a, as a, something they'd be interested in? Was there a survey given? Just, it's, a, it's a wonderful addition, in my opinion, because we read in the paper every day, and as I came down here, I saw signs that say no fracking, you know, so it's a wonderful addition, but I just uh, wondered how it got spun that way. Um, as for the students, I have no idea if there was a survey or anything. Um, I'm definitely jealous that these classes are not going to be offered and I didn't get to take them, but um, yeah. good classes. Yeah. Um, you know not sure them. <laughs> yeah. Not sure, though, um, how they came to fruition. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Moore, I think it was uh, teacher leadership decided that they wanted oh, to improve on in the next one, too. Mm -hmm. Good evening once again. Our science liaison, Kara Alexopoulos, actually brought this forward to Mrs. DeSoli and, and myself in an effort to streamline and clarify what is an already existing curriculum. So uh, the course currently is known as ecology. It really is, it's being taught from a book that says environmental science, and it has more of an environmental science bent, and uh, in an effort to uh, be more transparent and to give the students what they need, especially as we take feedback from some of the universities, uh, it became evident that this would be uh, something that would be productive. Super. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Moore, do we also, in terms, I know, Ms. Alex Apple has talked about the science standards. Do we see better alignment with this course to our science standards as well? That, that is a residual effect. The NGSS, the new generation of science standards, is now something that is in our lives, our academic lives. Mm -hmm. And this uh, really kind of adheres to some of the, those standards. We're just learning about the standards. We're really not 100% sure of uh, what they mean. And when I say that, the state has not put together their standardized test. 
So we're not sure what is going to be assessed. We know right. what the standards are, but we don't know where the areas of emphasis and focus are going to be. We do feel that this is going to help us. And then also in the student program and services, uh, we did discuss a change in the sequencing of curriculum that we think will help us uh, be productive in that NGSS test whenever it comes about. Thank you. Great. Any other discussion? Well, I'd like just to add, uh, you know, the town has gotten very involved in um, the environment as far as trees go. I know we have a battle going on with Brainerd Airport, and um, it would be nice to see our young students, our high school students, also get involved with tree planting and um, protecting and enhancing the environment. This would be a great side to that, um, or part of it. Um, anyone else with any discussion? We'll go on to a vote then. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6F passes. And for our final 6G, Diane, would you read that for us? Say that. I can't be trusted with the machines. Yeah, not in the, uh, <laughs> no, no, it's right here. <laughs> Technology. I know. I can't find it. G, oh, it's just here it is. Right here. Right here. Right oh, here. Right there. Right. Right there. Science is there. Yeah, I have that, but I thought we were going to have that. Pr recommend we approve <coughs> the WHS Science Department course deletion in ecology and environmental science. Second. <laughs> yeah, <Chris. okay>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any discussion on this? Now Holly. Um, I just have a question actually on all of these um, motions. And it, in, in, uh, as pertains to the, uh, the courses that are being added, um, I'm, I'm wondering what, are we incurring additional uh, or how much of a cost are we incurring for uh, materials? Um, do we have textbooks included in this? Where? Um, well, it's interesting you brought that up because we brought it up at the committee and, um, you know, part of it was they, they said, you know, they would look into textbooks and I said, how about if we now look at these Chromebooks we're using and to use the cloud for the information according to the chapters or the unit that they're working on. And the teachers responded very positively that that's how they would do it. Okay, so we don't expect a lot of um, mm -hmm. cost involved here as far as, uh, exactly. no? Okay, thanks. So you're saying no, okay. All right, um, any other discussion on that one? All right, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6G passes. Okay, so we finished that piece and now I'd like to invite Michael Emmett, would you please go up to the podium and you can introduce our 2018-2019 school budget. that shared services on the IT side. Thank you, Keith. I can see it. Good evening, everyone. Um, very nice to be with you uh, this evening. Uh, th this actually is my sixth uh, budget presentation uh, in my time here in Weathersfield. And I will say um, that I think it's important that we really tell the story with this budget. Um, we have undergone over the past year one of the most difficult uh, budgetary times we've ever faced. Uh, this year alone, we've seen a loss of $742,000 out of our operating budget. The town as a whole has lost $1.335 million of ECS funding. 
and yet every day we remain committed to making sure our kids and our teachers and staff have everything that they need to succeed. Um, we know that this particular budget is a, it's a blueprint, it's a draft, and it's going to need to be beaten up. We're gonna have to talk about what is important to us. We're gonna have to make hard decisions with this budget. And we know looking at the, um, kind of the, the tenor of what's going on in the state, things are not getting better, which I was really heartened to see the Weathersfield Education Foundation get off the ground tonight because this is an alternate source of revenue for us to be able to be innovative and that's what it's all about. So I wanna talk with you a little bit about kind of where we are. Um, for 17-18, our approved budget was 57 million, $777,882. And I had to actually add this line and I've never had to do this before, but we had the amended budget uh, downward uh, to fifty-seven million thirty-five thousand eight hundred eighty-three dollars. At this point in time, I'm proposing for the 2018-2019 budget year a budget of fifty-nine million three hundred two thousand dollars even. That's an increase of two million two hundred sixty-six thousand one hundred seventeen dollars. This re represents a percentage increase over the current operating budget of three point nine seven percent. Talking about what this increase includes, um, this is a slide that should seem familiar because this is exactly what we had last year as well. The majority of our increase here is related to contractual obligations, benefit requirements, our state and federal mandates um, with regard to special education, for example, and our actuar actuarial defined costs, our OPEB trust and our pension. And last but not least, our fixed costs in terms of transportation, tuition and utilities. Um, with regard to the contractual obligations, um, as you know, the administrative group uh, during their negotiations this year took a hard zero. That certainly provided a, a significant amount of savings, but our contractual obligations continue to be quite high with our other bargaining units. Looking at the summary by object, a step away from the podium and just kind of talk about it a little bit. You can see the majority of our spending is salaries and benefits. That is not unusual. That is what all districts face. The majority of the capital for a school budget is going to be your salaries and your benefits. In addition to that, we also provide for purchase professional and technical services. That encompasses our professional development, for example. Purchase property services and other purchase services. So that could include rent. That could include our lease for the Transition Academy. Um, we talk about supplies. When we talk about supplies, we're talking about our instructional supplies. We're also talking about uh, gas. We're talking about electricity. So there are many things that go into this, in, in, into this budget. And then miscellaneous usually ends up being fees and fees. budget. The school system makes up the, the majority of the budget. At this point in time, 56.37% of the town budget is us. I want to talk a little bit about the year-over-year -year budget increase. Um, over the past two years, we've seen our budget increase um, kind of slack. Two years ago, we came in at a 0.42% we provided the town with $500,000 to apply toward the um, health insurance. And then at this beginning of this year, we started off at a 2.06% increase. And with the reductions that we faced, we're currently uh, running at an increase of 0.75%. And the town, it's important to note that the town, uh, and again, I need to give out a great shout out to the town. The town took on great responsibility with that ECS reduction. The town council really stepped up. And the town council, you'll notice that uh, budget increase of around, I believe, 3.33%. The town utilized um, reserve funds to cover that, uh, that, that loss. We had to use operating budget. Historical salary and benefits, these have been pretty consistent over the course of time. And 
And then our non-salary accounts as well, there is some fluctuation at times, but we've been pretty consistent. And we also look, when we're looking at the idea of making budget reductions, we typically will look first at um, Fred's lines, operations and maintenance. We're gonna look at technology lines, so usually it's Keith's budget that we're, we're hitting. We'll hit supply lines. Um, obviously this year, in an effort to address the deficit that we had due to uh, loss of ECS funding, uh, we have the budget freeze in place. So at this point in time, other than emergency uh, repairs, uh, we're, we're not spending money right now. We're trying to hold on as best we can uh, to finish up at zero. We always talk about requests that are not included in the budget, and some of these are uh, items that you've seen on this list for the past six years. Um, one of the things that was requested was a special education administrator. We currently have two in the district. That's John Kazar, who's sitting out in the audience. We also have Melissa Cook, who is a special ed supervisor. We have uh, upwards of 500 students in our district who, our, uh, who are receiving special ed services that John and Melissa are responsible for. In addition to all of our Weathersfield students, John and Melissa also are responsible for overseeing special education IEPs for all of our students that are in outplacements and all of our students that are attending magnet schools. So right now, as of January 3rd, we had 284 students out at magnet schools. Of those 284, a percentage of those are receiving special ed services. So John and Melissa are constantly on the go with regard to going to PPTs. Um, we recognize the need, but at this point in time, that position has not been uh, fulfilled. Talking about tutors for ELL math and reading, this is one thing I hear coming from the schools frequently is increasing tutor hours. One of the things we looked for last year was the um, addition of an ELL teacher. We did not get that funding in the budget. However, we took tutor hours, applied the tutor hours to a certified ELL teacher. We're gonna to look to do that again. Our ELL numbers continue to rise. We are north of 300 students that are receiving ELL students. And for the first time, I have two schools that actually must provide bilingual services as well. We've hit that threshold. We are becoming a more and more diverse district. And then last but not least on this page, the certified library media specialists. We have our library and media specialists in place. They are not certified. Um, and this is one thing that we have taken a crack at for probably the last six or seven years. And in the grand scheme of things, I know this board is adamant about maintaining low class sizes. We have to strike that balance. So this is one that, that just has not made it. At the middle school level, you know, we've talked about this over the past couple years as well. I currently have a, a half-time social worker. Um, there has been discussion about adding that additional 0.5. Um, we've held off on that. Uh, a 1.0 special ed teacher to support co-teaching uh, and to reduce the current caseload. I can tell you that at Silas Dean, what we were able to do this year is we reallocated a position from Weathersfield High School over to Silas Dean to address at least some of the need. Um, but our special education caseloads certainly are quite high. At the high school, um, not included in the budget, a world language teacher uh, with dual language certification to meet new graduation requirements. The graduation committee uh, is gonna be meeting and is gonna be talking about the graduation requirements. One of the things that we did when we um, raised the graduation requirements was we put into place the idea that we would add teachers to teach some of these electives. We've not been able to do that in this tight budget time, so we're gonna have a conversation about that uh, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, Part-time uh, SRBI Edgenuity tutor, tutor. We have one person that's overseeing Edgenuity at this point in time, and during student programs and services, Mr. Maltesi talked about Edgenuity. That's the online credit retrieval um, program for our students that may be struggling or may have fallen behind. And then uh, again, the part-time athletic director stipend. I don't think I need to tell you how many hours Mr. Maltesi puts in. Uh, Mr. Maltesi is not here tonight because he's doing a uh, unified sports event uh, in Newington. But again, these are the things, the, the kind of the, the be nice to have, we'd like to have them, but in terms of core services and knowing where our budget is, we, we felt it important to express our need, but we know that we're, we're just not at the point where we can add these. Mike, I have a question on the sure. ingenuity. Um, that is the, like the credit retrieval program. That is correct. That kids do this work, it was on computers, if I remember. That's correct. Correctly. So when those kids come to the school and use the computer, is there someone to guide them into, let's say they need US history as a credit, you know? 
Yeah. Is there a person there that guides them, or are we asking for another part-time person? This is um, a very good question. In terms of who guides them, in terms of the courses that they need, that's going to be their guidance counselor. Okay. We want to make sure that the kids yeah. adhere to um, where, where they're missing the, right. the credits. In terms of having an edgenuity tutor, we have a grand total of one. Right now. One right now. Okay. And we have found through our experience that the virtual learning and the online learning does not work without adult support. Oh, absolutely. You know, to put a child in front of the computer and, you know, have them do it solely alone, you have to have somebody overseeing, you have to have somebody monitoring seat time, you have to have somebody there to answer questions. You cannot replace, you know, you enhance with right. the technology, but you still have to have that, that component there. Other requests not included in the budget. Um, last year, Fred had requested the HVAC technician to support the mechanical uh, equipment at the high school and throughout the district. Uh, that is another thing that did not get into the budget. We're still dealing with RTU3. Those of you at the community and public relations meeting last night could hear it running up above our heads uh, at the meeting. In terms of uh, technology, at this point in time, uh, Keith has put on hold uh, in the budget $50,000 for iPad replacements. Um, we are just about there in terms of one-to-one -one, um, with our Chromebooks in grades uh, two on. Uh, we utilize the iPads in grades K and one. And we have an ample supply, but the issue with them now, many of them are um, upwards of seven years old, so they're starting to wear out. So we're going to hold on that. And then again, uh, we've already uh, reduced in the budget $100,000 for facility maintenance, repairs, and upgrades. So along those lines are what we used to do is we used to do two classrooms per school and refurbish. We've held off on that for the past three years. So um, that's not in the budget. And again, with facilities and maintenance, we cut it every year and every year we have issues. So for example, I mentioned in communications tonight that we had that electrical panel go out at the high school. What are we thinking price-wise on that? About So, and these are the things, you know, you, you budget as, as best you can, and this is a building, we just refurbished it. It's, it's new, and it's out of warranty, but it's something we have to, this is something we have to replace. So, that's an area that we've already cut. Hi, Mike, I got a sure. question on that um, HVAC person. Mm -hmm. Could we, um, to hire somebody, we have to pay salary and benefits, correct? That's correct. Now, I know other companies are doing this as outsourced, like, could you make a contract with a, an HVAC company to be your go-to person and, and to pay less, maybe? I don't know. I'm just making a guess there. Good. Uh, an guess. Another good question. We do do some contracting out with um, various firms. Uh, we had an issue with uh, heat over at Charles Wright that we utilized an outside contractor for. Okay. Outside contractors, and correct me if I'm wrong, Fred, outside contractors tend to be more expensive. Oh. Yeah, so this, the savings isn't there. It's much better to have in-house. The other piece, too, that I'll talk about, and I'll mention this later, it's in one of my later slides, is, you know, we've talked about the idea of shared services, and, you know, we at this point in time are exploring the idea of shared services between uh, the town and the Board of Education in the areas of, of operations and maintenance. Uh, you know, one of the things I think that we have here is we have this, this belief that it immediately saves money. Um, from our early conversations, we don't necessarily see an immediate money savings. What we're looking for is the increase in efficiency. So if we don't get this particular position, we have an HVAC contractor on the in-house on the town side, maybe we can tap into the service there. Just a thought. So and again, I, again, just as I mentioned, here's the slide here. Um, in terms of potential 18, 19 adjustments, these are to be determined. Right now, we're projecting a 7.7% increase in insurance. We certainly have the potential to see that decrease. Um, we started, I believe, at 12, 14, almost 14%, and it's gone down to 77 .7. I do not think it will get down to zero this year, and we've been very fortunate. We've had a couple of years where it's, we've really been flat. So um, right now, the projection would be around 6%, so we may see that go down another uh, approximately 1.7%. Right now, our special ed costs are up 21.6% uh, based on the January outplacements. And as you know, when we met and talked about my evaluation, we are in the process of exploring opportunities to build in-house programs. 
where we would take students that are in outplacements, where we're spending for tr tuition, we're spending for transportation, and these kids are not even in Wethersfield, not in our district. We're looking to develop programming in-house in our schools, take the tuition money, reduce the tuition line, and then invest that into staff at our elementary schools to support these programs. So that's in the works at, as we speak right now. The natural gas right now is down 2.2%. Um, this may increase based on weather. We had a pretty difficult winter this far, uh, thus far, so we'll be watching that very carefully. I mentioned the shared services, and I've mentioned already the proposed uh, special ed program in-house. And again, these just tend to be line by line. Um, I think you know we can get into these much more deeply when we um, schedule and uh, go through our budget workshops but you can see the overall trends. Mike, could you explain to a newcomer what the non-bargaining salary looks like? If it's a non-bargaining, go ahead. Thanks for coming over. What, what's a non-bargaining? Non-bargaining uh, individual would be someone like the accounting supervisor, it would be someone like Mr. Kazaka, it would be somebody like Mr. Bushy, somebody who's not engaged in a union. What, what, we're down a couple positions in that group, correct? What we're doing right now, Diane, is we're projecting that position to be filled, one of the positions to be filled. Right now it's been held in advance this year, it is in the budget for next year, not filled. That would be the instructional supervisor position. So the instructional supervisor position, the part-time uh, transition coordinator, which we will fund out of the grant next year. So that position we can take out of the budget altogether. Is it one of them in the administrative bargaining unit? One of them is in the bargaining unit. So the account supervisor works in the business office. So the non-bargaining salaries, what does that $67,000 increase equate to? Come on, Matt. Yeah, the STEM supervisor is in the second line. That's where the increase is year over year. No, I'm looking, I'm at the, the non-bargaining, we had a retirement in the HR office. She was in the secretarial union. The new position is a non-bargaining. So you can see a decrease okay. in the secretary line, but there's an increase in the non-bargaining. Okay. okay. Thank you. And Carol Cancellari's uh, <laughs> retirement. That's that one. Other questions? <laughs> well, again, if I don't know the answer, I have my team here with me. Okay, and here's just a little bit of background. See somebody familiar in that picture? Salaries increasing 2.35%. The bulk of that is the uh, teacher salaries. And I mentioned earlier in the graphs, the salaries comprise 63.62% of the budget. I was told by Keith that this picture is a new picture. You might have seen that one before. Highcrest does that every year, so that is that's the latest. Oh. Yeah, right now we're, we're projecting a health insurance increase of 7.72 percent. OPEB trust, we uh, contribute a percentage of OPEB. Seventy-eight thousand. Seventy-eight thousand. Matthew, any um, education reimbursement for education? Mm -hmm. This year we're going to have fifty-five thousand put in there to yes. start with. That's the maximum for the contract. Yeah, but that's total, right? That's a total. So, how much can a teacher get reimbursed? I don't know that number. Okay. But the, I, I think there. Like if I took a class and it cost me a thousand dollars, let's just say. Yeah, I, I don't know what the number I, can is. Can I apply for a thousand dollars to come back to me, or do I get a percentage of that thousand? You don't. It's not the full amount. There's okay. a paper cap on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just want to make sure. It's yeah, like, that's contract. That's contractual. A teacher contract. Yes. Go ahead, yeah. Diane. Yeah. Thanks. Well, the severance pay. When when do we pay severance? That's not the buyouts or the accruals. The so severance is part of the WFT contract. Ten percent of their salary. 
it's not really a severance, is it? It's a retirement bonus. bonus. It's kind of an it's it's an incentive. So would that be the account that we take out of if we um, have a dismissal and we settle it via stipulated agreement? Yeah, I think that would make more sense. Okay. Do we have a breakdown of what, how we've been paying out of that account? Yeah, you get that. It's just a funny word for what it's being used for. Right Absolutely. <laughs> And then there's just the, the background. Uh, can I just follow up on that? Uh, so um, on the line above that, that um, the severance pay, you have retirement incentives. Is that the, you okay over there? Yeah, I just look. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm looking at it as you're asking the question. Yeah, I'm not right. ducking the question. Go ahead, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, is it the, ret the five thousand retirement incentive? Is that if um, uh, if a teacher or a staff person allow um, advises what in January that they plan to retire? Yeah, it, the the way it works by the contract. If I have someone that notifies me a, a year in advance okay. of them going prior to us building the budget, that gives us the flexibility to build that savings into the budget. So, for example, I have one retiree that noticed me back in June of okay. last year. So I was already able to carry that retirement right up front. So that's the incentive there. Okay, thanks. Again, with regard to legal services, legal services, um, our trend has been upward. Obviously, um, we've got multiple contracts that we are either in negotiation with now or will be negotiating with next year. You're also aware that this year, um, over the course of in, into the latter part of the summer, we had a termination hearing as well. We also utilize legal services for special education. We utilize legal services for expulsion. Uh, legal services for labor uh, and relations as well. Now one of the things we look for for the future in terms of the potential of shared services is with regard to negotiation of contract. We may end up looking at some savings there in terms of legal services if the uh, custodians fall under the town uh, auspices. We would, if we do that, there's, there is going to be some negotiation costs because of a transition, mm -hmm. so we will incur some costs for that negotiation project. Excuse me, Michael. Does sure. I noticed that we um, the seventeen eighteen budget was one hundred and seventy five thousand for legal services, and then we're showing um, an increase to two forty for the eighteen nineteen budget. Um, so that one seventy five included the. Um, you know, we had negotiations and we also had um, the uh, termination and mm -hmm. we had other issues. Are you anticipating that, w uh, I, I, do we have that many uh, um, negotiations coming up? We've got teachers coming up, right? We've got teachers coming up, we've got nurses coming up, okay, we've got so custodians coming up, and okay. we're currently engaged with uh, secretaries in Paris. Right, so that's where you're anticipating mm -hmm. that, that increase will be? Yes. Okay. Those negotiations will start fiscal year 1819. Fiscal year 1819 for um, custodians, for nurses, and for teachers. Again, here's water and sewer. This is another one of those fixed costs. We're kind of at the mercy of MDC. You see that increase of 20.59%. Excuse me, why do you expect uh, rents and leases yeah, to go down? Yeah, You're looking at a decrease in rents and leases, leases of 20,000?
flat as well as the mobile leads. So we have some other ancillary items. We reduced our custodial equipment that we rent. So yeah. We oh, okay. And I believe also on the athletics piece would be uh, hockey rinks. We added down a little bit. Oh, okay. Well Great. Flat. Okay. Most Thanks. Most are flat here every year. Yeah. And, okay. And Mr. Bushy, I know in, in the past we've actually uh, rented space to store equipment. Is that still in place? Okay. For the next few months anyway, we're trying to get it down to one place at uh, so it's feasible. Okay, good. Thank you. Good. <coughs> and here we're talking about transportation. One of the things I certainly want to talk about is we engage in uh, our budget workshops and look at areas of savings. We have three athletic buses. And we have drivers for those athletic buses. The buses are extremely expensive to maintain. Uh, we have one involved in an accident, as you know, uh, last week that needs to be repaired. Uh, so that would be one thing I'd certainly be taking a look at as to whether or not we continue to need three athletic buses. Um, I'm happy to say that uh, we have a contract with auto transportation at this point in time. The athletic runs have been covered. Uh, nobody's left, uh, been left hanging, so that piece is good. Again, with the buses, those used to be uh, required to be inspected every year. Uh, the state has changed that. They have to be inspected every three months. So you're paying for the inspection, you're paying for any, any repair that it has. Obviously, the piece that we're looking at here on this line as well is the issue of the um, tuition. Um, do remember that with magnet tuition, if I have students that go out for magnets, we are responsible for a portion of the tuition cost. I mentioned in a recent Friday update that at this point in time, CREC is financially strapped. Um, the state is not meeting its obligation in terms of what it needs to fund CREC. Uh, the uh, per pupil expenditure for CREC right now is about 16,500 and the state is uh, providing a mere percentage of that. What we see happening down the road, they've got to raise the revenue somewhere so the likelihood of them coming back to member towns with me to cover the cost of that uh, tuition difference is, is increasing. So we need to be cognizant of that. Uh, Mike, how, how does that compare to our per people cost? <laughs> our per people cost? Let's think about that in terms of 15 minutes. We were in the 15 range then. I'll get you the specific. I know the CREC, the last I heard it last Thursday, uh, the CREC was like 16500 what is the tip around 15 now? 15 and change. I can get that for you. And Matt, you, Matt, what do we pay, or Mike, what do we pay for a kid that goes to like the Discovery Academy? What do we have to pay for that? Uh, it's it's going to depend, Elaine, on there'll be a standard tuition, and then we would pay in addition if the child is receiving special services. We're going to pay a la carte for those services as well. So it, it ranges. So let's just say it's an average kid whose parents are pulled in, um, parents' name is pulled in the lottery just to go to Discovery. Just to go, what sure. What's the cost for that? Four, four, about? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Plus we have to pay for the transportation. We pay transportation and then we're paying for any ancillary costs regarding special education. Right. And that's one of the things with regard, you know, we talk about open choice. We participate in open choice. One of the things we do with our open choice numbers is we get tuition in for open choice students. We use the open choice tuition money that we get to offset the, the magnet schools. And I shared some information today with uh, Mrs. Granado and Mr. Hill um, regarding the uh, open choice numbers. Uh, Weathersfield seems to be the district to come to in terms of applications. We had by far the highest percentage of applications for open choice of any of the participating open choice districts. With that being said at this point in time, we know that we have clear indication that we want low class sizes, we have limited capacity. So we have to be very strategic in terms of um, in the declaration of seats. You know, for example, we had uh, 79 applications for kindergarten alone. We had 90 applications for ninth grade for, for open choice. So our numbers were huge. Uh, we had 459 out of 1,858 families request Weathersfield as number one choice. Now, one would say, oh, that's nothing more than just the proximity to Hartford. 
we looked at the West Hartford numbers and the West Hartford numbers, West Hartford, right on the board of Hartford, West Hartford numbers were significantly less than, than what we see. So in terms of open choice numbers, obviously we look at that um, through the month of March and we look at our number of students going out. Right now our total percentage of open choice uh, participation is just a shade above 2%. So we do receive service, uh, the tuition. In addition to that, students receiving um, special ed services that are in open choice, we bill Hartford. So we're not responsible for those costs. And I talked about special education tuition. I've said this in all the years I've been standing at the podium, even back in the days as director of special services, special education is always the wild card. We will project out those students that will age out. I may have three students that are special ed within one family that move. I may have a family that moves in from Rocky Hill. There's always a level of fluidity with regard to special education. So the key piece for us is making sure we have quality programming for our kids. And you'll also notice um, we project the VOAG tuition actually de decreasing because of fewer number of students going out. Here we're showing a, uh, a, a decrease in instructional supplies. I do want to be careful with that. Instructional supplies gets cut all the time. And I want to make sure that our teachers have what they need. So this is a conversation certainly to have with our principals to make sure that uh, we've got the necessary materials for kids to learn. And you can see in this particular set of line items, there's a lot of, uh, lot of red there. I talked about this earlier. We're holding off on classroom furniture requests and replacement technology purchases. And we see a slight decrease here in terms of uh, reduction in uh, memberships. Budget outcomes, this is another one that looks pretty familiar, should look familiar to you. Um, in terms of our commitment, that hasn't wavered and that hasn't changed. In spite of the difficult budget times, we need to continue to make a commitment to our students to ensure that they have the best quality education and they have all the tools that they need to succeed. We remain focused on continuous improvement while adhering to state and federal mandates that impact our budget. I would also add in there that we look to be innovative. Families make residency decisions based upon the quality and reputation of the school system. Um, right now I'm looking on, on Zillow and I have Weathersfield dialed in on Zillow. And in the past two weeks, usually I get a list of the real estate in Weathersfield, usually one hit per day. And I have seen in the past two weeks, I've seen 12 different properties uh, go to pending. So people are, are buying houses in this town. I've had two houses that I've been interested in and they've both been snapped up before I could even get out to look. So, you know, the reality here is people are buying homes in this town and I think that we've got a, a school system to be proud of. I think it's important under your stewardship that we continue to make these difficult choices, never losing sight of the fact that it is about the kids and it's about providing them the education that they deserve. So with that, I'm sure there may be questions. Um, I wanna talk with you a bit about the timeline as well. This is later than we would typically present a budget. Obviously with the trials and tribulations of the 1718 budget, um, we're a little bit behind. Uh, I've got some to be determined. First and foremost, um, budget workshops. Um, Deb Murphy, my faithful assistant, will be polling you for potential dates. Uh, we're certainly amenable to Saturdays. I would hold off on this Saturday only because it's a holiday weekend and people may be traveling, but um, certainly February 24th is a potential. The idea of the adoption of this budget, we have two uh, board meetings coming up. We have the 27th of February and we have the 13th of March. 
So we do have some flexibility uh, in terms of approving this budget. I do need to let you know that by charter, uh, the budget needs to be uh, sent with the transmittal letter to the town council by the 15th of March. And also the town budget hearing, looked at the calendar today. The town budget hearing, I believe, is scheduled for the third Monday in April, which is April 16th, 2018. And then April 16th, and I'll put that in the Friday package just to verify. In addition to that, um, once the board approves the budget, we'll talk with town council about setting up a time to come out and present this to town council as well in March. With that, any questions? Uh, just, uh, just a question, as far as workshops are concerned, are you thinking just one or um, more than one or, or uh, I, th I think at this point in time, Polly, I would, I would look at at least two. Okay. And the reality here is we're not operating from a position of I've got a lot of initiatives in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, obviously for me, I'm looking for a number and I tried to get the number down as far as I could. You know, looking at uh, various towns, uh, Berlin came in above 5%. Uh, Rocky Hills come in above 6%. Newington was in, um, in the, I believe, the 5% range. Glastonbury was in, uh, I think, between 4 and 5, and then has, has now pared it down. I know Berlin has pared their number down as well. So it's really looking at, you know, where the board feels comfortable, where town council feels comfortable. And then I think the, the heavy lifting work is really looking at what you see as priorities. You know, we talked about those... Uh, you know, the, the must-haves last year, the sacred cows, if you will. Mm -hmm. So it's going to really, you know, be upon us to look at what scenarios do we have? What can we afford to do without? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking, I, my suggestion would be at least two. Obviously, these budget workshops would be open to the public, as they always are. Um, the other aspect this year, utilizing our uh, Blue Eagle uh, television production, uh, February 28th, I believe, was scheduled to come over uh, to talk budget. So myself, uh, Mr. Kazak, I talked to Mr. Hill recently, and Mrs. Granado as well, um, to get this out via our television uh, media in-house to talk about the budget, to talk about the impacts, and to talk about why we need what we need. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else with questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, Michael. You. Okay. In keeping with the theme of just small items tonight, we have a first reading from our shipment and Goodwin model policies, which everyone has their huge binder on. Um, do we have any discussions or questions from board members after this lengthy assignment? Polly? Um, I, I would just like to, um, uh, to point out that actually as big as the binder is, it's nothing compared to <laughs> The binders that I think there were two or three yeah, there of were five this, nine. this size, <laughs> no, of the old they ones, huge, and then yeah. we had they yeah. multiply. Yes. They just so multiply. They have a well, bookshelf <laughs> in my house. All right. So the uh, the intent being here, as Mr. Um, Emmett mentioned before, is uh, because we really don't have um, access to the CABE, to updated CABE policies. Um, be, anymore um, that the best thing to do would be to uh, go back t to just mm -hmm. uh, have the board read through these alt um, hopefully uh, next meeting approve these they will just immediately go up on the website and then we'll go back and and look at the uh, each section to be sure that some of the um, the policies that had that were implemented by our board over the years that were specific to our board, uh, you know, to make sure that nothing was missed, and uh, also, as he said, uh, we want to start with the bylaws to make sure that. Um, and I realize now, having been on this committee for as many years as I have, that I was <coughs> around when the bylaws were gone over the last <laughs> many time, years ago. and then to hear that they haven't been in a while is. Um, it's, it's discouraging. Yeah. Anyone else for comment? Elaine, did you have a comment? 
you know, I just wanted to clarify that um, we are asking the board, members who aren't on the policy committee, to approve the series, and there is no zero, zero, zero series, but the, all the series without um, the policy committee having read them. We are in good faith taking that the Shipman and Goodman have um, provided us with all the mandates and we will read each section in the, delve into it piece by piece. So it's not, not something we're not asking to do in good faith. We're just trying to have all the policies so people can say, when I visit a school and put in the search box, visit schools and mm -hmm. whatever will come up for them because what's up, there is nothing up there now. Right. <laughs> so right. Holly's trying to get something up there for us, but we will delve each one as they come along as Mike dictates which one to do. Well, and, the, and I think the key piece to remember here is obviously you want to have policies in place that limit your liability. And yeah. for me, obviously, the 5000 series is very important the, with students and student discipline and special education. We want to make sure that we have policies that are as up to date as possible. In addition to that, we talk about going back and going through the series. We have some policies that we have written that are uh, germane to Weathersfield. Right. We don't. We certainly want to look at those and say, do they have value? Do we need right. to keep these? We have also we have policies. You know, for example, we have um, job descriptions uh, dating back to like 1962. Job descriptions have no business being in a policy manual, and our council clearly says that. So those are some you know, items that need to go. But um, the idea right now is to make sure that we have all of those policies that are mandated and we can implement those in the future. And I, oh, I'm sorry. Diane? Sorry. I, for one, was very welcoming of this because after sitting through the past two years of <laughs> the same way the cave has been. <laughs> no, he went for it. <laughs> um, th those cave policies were just, at, at times, a, a huge waste of our time because mm -hmm. they were not put together correctly, and it was just—it was so cumbersome. Um, and it was refreshing t to look through this manual, um, compared to, as Polly mentioned, the six other binders. I would just also mention that um, Shipman and Goodwin will update these for us uh, automatically as well. Thank so you. we'll have—we uh, do have that. Uh, uh, to look forward to, so. Mm. But each update will need board approval. Oh, so uh, oh, absolutely. However, it's yeah. good Mike to know that, that, that we will. Many times. Yeah. True. <laughs> that's true. Piece piece. <laughs> well, and that'll be the, the function of the policy and planning yes, committee right. is to meet, rather than meeting, when we were meeting, you know, Diane and Polly, I know you were on the committee, we were meeting twice a month yeah. and doing a lot of wordsmithing. This way we can cut the meetings down to quarterly, focus on student programs and services, community public relations, certainly facilities and maintenance, focus our efforts elsewhere. Right. So. At the last meeting, policy meeting, we had Chris made the um, interesting comment that we need a word search though for this because yes. the, it's it's yes. hard to find things and in this notebook, right? Um, I think it so took us like 20 minutes to find that one thing that we were told where it was, right? But we were manually going through it. Remember? <laughs> but yes. Michael just said that it is it does come with that. It will have the searchability feature, and that's what happened when we lost our access to Cave because we no longer subscribe to Cave we ended up having to scan the manual. So the manual's there, we have policies in place clearly, but the searchability feature isn't there. So to try and go through you know, hundreds of pages, it's extraordinarily cumbersome and, and time consuming. So mm -hmm. we're looking to streamline that. And, and you have, um, or we, one of the things that we do wanna do is um, have uh, the, no the policies numbered better or the pages or whatever for right. reference. We're talking about yeah. that right okay. now, yes. All right, thanks. Anyone else? So then after tonight, but this is our first reading, the next time we come back with this, we'll be voting on it. That is correct. correct. There'll be a motion okay. before you on the 27th. If you have any questions or concerns in the meantime, please email me, let me mm -hmm. know. I can get to our attorney with any legal questions, um, but by all means, let me know. Okay, great. Let's move on then. Okay, so we have meetings held. Policy and planning, that was a good one to have right up there okay. on the top. Polly? Uh, well, that's pretty much what would be uh, minutes from that last meeting are included uh, in, your, uh, in your packet. And I think um, both Mr. Emmett and I hit on it and we pretty, I think we've been pretty thorough about it. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, Memorial Day Parade Committee, I know John's not here. He was trying to get here even though it was late, so we'll, we'll save that for next time. School Projects Building Committee, Michael? Yes, yeah, so we met uh, on the 31st of January, um, and right now financially we're in good shape at this point in time, I'm very pleased to say. Uh, we've had some good success with our change orders. Uh, the most recent change order, uh, I believe change order number 17, just came to me yesterday for signature, so I've signed off on that and it's gone up to the state. Um, you know, we continue to focus on closing the project out. Um, so ONG is kind of still involved on a cursory level. Um, we're still dealing, obviously, with issues with RTU3. It's certainly been a vexing thing, and we're still working on that. Um, but for the most part, we're, we're starting to say the high school project is done, which is a great thing. No lemon law on that, then on that piece? It's no? Out of warranty, I believe me, as Fred could attest, that was one of the first things I asked. Okay. Out of warranty. All right. Student Program and Services Committee. John Morris. Uh, as I said, this is my maiden voyage, so don't expect a lot. Um, <laughs> a so chunk of it was dedicated to the discussion of the class edition solutions. We did a motion for earlier. Uh, we had a nice update from Mr. Maltesi on the Edgenuity Program. And um, we had a really good discussion regarding the technology um, programs that were there. It was a nice presentation, including some video of what the kids are doing and some of the projects that are going on. So it's really fascinating. I'm dying yeah. to see more of this. It is. They're very good. Any questions on that, Diane? Can, can we, can the rest of the mem people that are not members of that committee get that agenda ahead of time in case um, there are some things of interest that we would like to? Yeah. John had mentioned that last that time. Yeah. Was I was going to go to the last student services, and if too many of us go, it's a meeting. That's the problem. That, no? Is it a yeah. meeting anyway? Oh, it's, it's a meeting anyway. It's a meeting anyway. Yeah, you, you oh, can go. Okay. It's a meeting I, anyway. I yeah. said to Bobby, if I go to it, be yeah. too many of us. It's, oh, it's yeah. posted. Oh, okay. okay. I forgot Absolutely. it was posted. Yes. That's yes. my thing. You can go. I'm going. Oh, oh you Because I like to hear these things. You're a member. Going on with oh, the oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yep. I didn't realize it was posted, so we can. Absolutely. Anyone else on that? It is. They're, it, they're excellent meetings, and they um, uh, so many new changes that are coming along now, yeah. too, and we'll talk about that as we uh, have more of these meetings. All right, we have uh, Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, WEC, Holly. Uh, yes, uh, they met last night. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend, but uh, Kim Bobbin, who uh, was kind enough to give me some update today, um, the... Um, they reported that the uh, second annual parent leadership training, which is a UConn program um, called People Empowering People, is in its fourth week. Um, I think they have between 10 and 15 mm -hmm. student or um, parents who are involved with that at this point. Um, they expect to have a graduation on May 10th, so um, be a good thing to put on your calendar. Um, the successful transition to kindergarten program is going to be held from July uh, 9th to the 19th. Uh, this is a free program that's available for um, kids who do not have any uh, preschool background. Um, also, the preschool scholarships will continue to be funded by the mayor's uh, charity ball for 2018-19. So um, that was, uh, I think, last year that uh, that event was able to provide about ten thousand dollars in scholarships, so um, that's that's a very good that's very good for them to know, and that's it. Okay, and we have community and public relations committee. Ginger. Yeah, the community and public relations committee met last night at the high school. We were given a tour of the new larger TV studio and discussed its current use as a studio for the Blue Eagle News and proposed use for things like presenting the district budget and other news that we have to send out to the community. Uh, Mr. Emmett and Mr. Raffanello provided an overview of the current social media platforms that we use, which include a fa district Facebook page that auto-loads to Twitter and individual school Facebook pages. These are generally used for lighter news and community updates and are distinct from School Messenger, which Mr. Emmett uses for announcing school schedule changes and emergencies. 
It was noted that the website, which is also maintained by Mr. Raffanello, is more static, <coughs> excuse me, with quick links to pages that are most used. The design is due for a spruce up in the next year or two, as this is generally done every five years or so. And Mr. Emmett asked for our input into this process. Uh, Mr. Emmett also said he would like to look more closely at how the website greatschools.org comes up with its ratings for Wethersfield schools. The ratings currently range from 5 to 8 out of 10. Great Schools is a national nonprofit whose website claims that their summary rating provides a snapshot of a school's quality based on multiple measures compared to other public schools in the state. Um, it would be interesting to compare their methodology to the methodology used by the state in the uh, accountability index that Mr. Emmett will be presenting mm -hmm. to us next time. And that's it. Okay. Thank you, Ginger. Okay, we're going to go back to our special board of education meeting. It was canceled and rescheduled for tomorrow, but Mr. Emmett liked to talk about it. Yeah, that uh, special board meeting is to um, address a confidential student matter. Um, it was originally scheduled for yesterday, um, and it needed to be continued, so we will be meeting tomorrow. Okay. That's at 2.30? Yep. Yes, it is. That's Jane? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Elaine? Um, may I report what human resources has, the status of human resources on their meetings sort of held, or should I go to board comment? Board comment. What comment was that, Ryan? I want to talk about our hum, where we are on human resources committee for everybody. Oh, you want to? Oh, go, go right okay ahead. right now? Yep. Okay, because um, it's after all of it. Um, Bobby and I met with, um, the, we we're talking about the district handbook being finished up, and we, Bobby and I had read the rough draft. And we met with Mr. Don Donahue. 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 <laughs> I'm yeah. lost because they're Trent. I was going to call him Mr. Trent. Um, and we were very impressed with the, the um, handbook as it stands. There's just a few things we'd like to um, see uh, maybe elaborated or taken out. And it was not major. He did a great job, and it's very clearly read clear for anybody to read. So it's not only for teachers, it goes to everybody that works in the district, carers, everybody. And um, we were very pleased. So I just wanted to let my human resource committee meeting people know that we are, it's coming to our committee after the attorney looks at it. So we'll get to discuss it together. And Thank I didn't you. think they were Thank missing, they were missing that we hadn't I haven't had a committee meeting, so I wanted to let them know. And that is a big part of that committee, yeah. is that Is that, that revised meeting going to be shared with the rest of the committee? Mm -hmm. Yes, That's right after it comes back from the attorney. Well, that, yeah, can, but can we get it well before the meeting? Can the attorney oh, yeah. go through uh, it? Well, I, well, yes, that, I, I would that want long. that. But I don't know when um, Mr. Donahue is going to get it back from the attorney. Do you want the one back from the attorney, or do you want the rough draft now, Diane? Let me send out the rough draft. Yeah, like yeah. Let's send the rough draft because that way you get the kind of the baseline and then we'll, um, when we get yeah, the information back from the attorney. Happy to do that. I think everybody on my committee should have it. My, you know, ahead of time. So if you could ask Deb to send it to everybody yep. on my committee. Thank you, sir. Okay, anyone else on those? All right. Um, meeting scheduled, we have a CREC Council on February 21st at 1130 and finance and information that might be rescheduled. That's at 227, February 27th, but that'll be on, but we'll reschedule. Um, are there, is there any unfinished business? We have a wellness committee meeting scheduled for February 28th at oh, 6 o'clock at Stillman. What was the date again? February 28th. Anyone else? No, okay. Um, all right. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay. No one? Are there any board comments? Ginger. I just wanted to thank Mr. Emmett and Mr. Kazaka for uh, providing me with a paper copy of the budget because I'm an old dog. Yeah. And you can see I already have color-coded post-it notes. So I'm really looking forward to the review. 
because the budget analyst in me is ready to rock. <laughs> you should have been around when we were giving out the 650-page uh, budgets. Remember those? <laughs> <laughs> glad to help. I'm glad, I'm glad you're excited, rush. Ginger. And Good. we actually, uh, thanks to Mr. Kazaka, um, we provided hard copies. While it's nice, you know, from a, a logistical standpoint to, uh, you know, get them out via uh, email, um, to have that hard copy to uh, kind of mark up, especially when we do our budget workshop uh, work. Um, so thank you, Mr. Kazaka. Yeah, we do appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else with comments? Holly? Um, I did. Um, First of all, I wanted to, I don't know if Keith is still here or not, but I, one of the things I wanted to mention was that um, we had that, uh, and it was back in January, um, Keith sent us a copy of the uh, uh, technology newsletter. newsletter. Yeah, and um, I appreciate very much the fact that it was <coughs> concise. It, there wasn't a lot of uh, too much wordiness, and I got some great tips from it, and uh, I, I really appreciate that. So uh, I just wanted to mention that. Um, I also, I, I know it was, again, in January, but one of the things I, two of the things I wanted to mention, um, and I missed the last board members er, meeting, so bear with me if this was brought up, but I happened to see in um, Weathersfield Life last month, and I, I just wanted to um, recognize and, and show my appreciation to um, uh, Jacob Hahn, who is a uh, sixth grader at Webb, and um, Nora Magel, who's a, uh, also a uh, sixth grader at Webb, and both of them wrote essays mm -hmm. that were um, in Weathersfield Life. And uh, first of all, Weathersfield Life is, does a great job of really focusing on our, our schools, and um, I was very, um, I was very impressed with the writing because again that's something we always worry or we always are concerned about and um, and they were great stories especially Nora's because I understand about the fact of being afraid of going on rides and she's more courageous than I was so look it up guys if you don't have it <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention was that I went to the uh, hunger action team meeting last week um, there the uh, the Weathersfield um, Food Bank uh, last year provided um, uh, assistance to a, about 145 uh, households in January, which is up from the previous month. Uh, we also, uh, that, uh, there is also a weekend backpack, uh, and there are 15 families, which includes 29 kids that uh, were served by that. Um, just as a um, uh, just as an aside, the weekend back pro backpack program is also supported through the uh, mayor's charity ball, um, and um, there there were a couple of um, items there, uh, um, and mainly the big things were there's a food share walk um, that's coming up in May, um, and March is national. Uh, nutrition Month. So um, the the um, slogan is "Go further with food." So we are expecting that hopefully the the schools will um, participate. So I'm looking forward to uh, uh, to that. Um, as far as CREC is concerned, there are um, I saw um, a flyer today that um, the um, the CREC is going to be holding. Uh, some workshops uh, going forward that are going to um, address uh, a, a couple of items. One of the big ones is the impact of uh, 10 years of flat funding and, um, and budget reductions uh, in the Hartford uh, region and also the poten that potential impact as far as school districts are, uh, are concerned. So. Um, Hopefully there will be uh, legislators there and, um, and there will be other people interested in schools. So there are about four locations on different dates. And also, um, I'm planning to attend, and I believe there are others who are going to the legislative breakfast on Thursday. Um, I, the last list that I saw did include quite a few of, our le of the legislators, including um, our 
uh, one of our representatives, uh, Russ Morin. So, um, and we went, Bobby and uh, Mr. Emmett and I went last year and uh, it was actually very, very good. It comes at a good time to get some explanations. Uh, in a previous meeting, I mentioned a, um, a program at the, a, a little project at the middle school called Bake for Good, which is um, sponsored by um, King Arthur's Flower. Um, Mrs. Hayward? Yes. Uh, is, the t is the home ec teacher, or if they call it home ec, I'm sorry. Uh, family, cons family, family consumer science. Family shop. consumer <laughs> science. You're dating yourself. <laughs> Okay, well, that's what we took in, in, in when I went to school so we could be, you know, grow up to be good housewives. Um, but at any rate, yeah, and I mentioned this, the last one I mentioned before was that King Arthur's Flower provides the supplies and then um, her class makes over a period of several classes um, the, the dough and, and bread or rolls which they then distribute um, where they see fit in the community where there was the need and um, they had she had two eighth grade classes and they um, cr they made 320 rolls so um, unfortunately I had asked to be invited <laughs> and I wasn't <laughs> so I don't know if they were good but I think they were <laughs> so that's all I have thank you thank you Polly Anyone else for comments? And Kevin? Uh, quickly, I just want to reiterate something Mr. Emmett already brought up, um, was that uh, Hammer School for the second year in a row gets a, uh, a uh, school of distinction uh, from the State Department of Education. Um, so, you know, we, with Margaret Zakay leaving us and Mr. Greer coming in, that school has not missed a beat. Um, so congratulations to the <laughs> staff. Thanks. 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 Anyone else? I have a couple comments that, um, first of all, I went to Keen on Kids on January 25th, and um, this is part of the Keen Foundation, and it's a coalition of many different departments and agencies um, in Wethersfield that work to enhance the experience of our students. Um, some interesting facts, after school in the fall, a total of 900 kids were enrolled in after school classes, and there was an even percentage of boys and girls enrolled. And they did have culinary, Polly, they did. The winter, <laughs> the winter had, has 670 enrollees already and signups continue. There are scholarships available through the school social workers. Um, interesting, Keen is using a new STEM program called Crazy Eights, which is a recreational math club for after school enrichment. This program is from Bedtime Math Organization. Um, it can only be used for after school. I thought that was most interesting, so Keen is using it. Um, South Dean Middle School after school tutoring and their intramural sports are funded by the Keen Foundation, and this continues to be well attended. The library, with um, their interesting and innovative ideas um, for kids and Keens, uh, my teens, my favorite is the Hot Cocoa Cafe, where about 40 students came to silently read. That, that, you know, they have to keep working on that one. Um, I want you to please go to the Keene Foundation website um, because the, uh, this group gives us incredible contributions to all our schools, and thank you to Judy Keene and her board. Um, tonight, we voted on changes to the high school curriculum for courses in English and science, and um, the Student Program and Services Committee and I don't blame everybody for wanting to be there. They had a presentation last week by our very talented high school teachers as they explained why we need these changes and what was now being offered. The board has said it before. We have a state-of-the-art high school, and now it's being filled with 21st century curriculum. The board thanks all the teachers and the administrators involved in these changes. And also tonight you heard the presentation from the newly formed Wethersfield Education Foundation. This organization is distinct from the school board and the district itself. And in these days of budget cuts, rising expectations for schools and decreasing state monies, this foundation will provide another way to enhance and enrich our curriculum. We are looking for community participation by having members of the community volunteer to be a member of the foundation. 
I hope you will take the time to sign up by emailing Sue Fennelly at suefwef at gmail.com, which is on the website. There is so much work to be done. Um, we're going to reach out to businesses, corporations, alumni, other foundation, grants, and individual donors. And the board thanks you all ahead of time for signing up and your willingness to support. So with that, we're going to ask Justin what's going on at that state-of-the-art high school. <laughs> Thank you. SATs will be administered to, administered to all juniors on May 5th. Is that correct? March 5th? <laughs> Apparently somebody else knows the date, not May. <laughs> March 21st, and is that PSATs too? Right, that would go to PSATs. Okay, that's just SATs on March 21st. And just for juniors? <laughs> 21st. Okay. And juniors are also invited to attend a focus group to review possible books for next year's Film as Literature English class. Oh, good. Student input is very valuable to the book adoption process. The group will meet on Thursday, February 22nd, and students should see or email Mrs. McKenna with any further information. Students in Mrs. Duggan's African American Studies class have been celebrating Black History Month by creating videos and podcasts informing, informing others about pivotal figures in African American <coughs> history. I look forward to sharing some of these with you at our, at our board meeting this month. Next board meeting this month, there we go. <laughs> And lastly, I was able to chat with Mr. Emmett on Friday, so keep an eye out for that on the Google News. Great. Thank you, Great. Justin. Thank you, Justin. Any questions for the Justin? Any discussion? No. Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. A second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all, and good night.